So I'm going to start, Tobe, I've got yeah. to start by saying I was on my phone, on the phone to my daughter, my oldest. Yeah. And she said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm frantically trying to find some Wi-Fi. <laughs> and she said to do this gig and she said, who are you talking to? And I said, Toby Jones. And she said, mum, mum, you've got to tell Toby Jones that I love him, love him. He is the great, greatest actor and he's clearly a very wonderful human being and ridiculously Aww. smart. So I said, I don't, I don't feel like telling him that today, actually. I don't actually. <laughs> Julia, I'm so, it, Julia, in the middle of this compliment, I'm going to make you say it all again. Someone's knocked at my door. You can't answer it. I've got to. <laughs> what the hell? Now was, then, it, was it a delivery? No. It's, it's, was your Olivier Award being delivered in a box? Well, if it was, I couldn't possibly divulge that. So your lovely daughter said what? She said, please tell Debbie Jones that I love him. Oh. He's a brilliant, brilliant actor. And she's very, very, she's a tough critic. She goes to theatre a lot. She's made theatre. I love him. He's a brilliant actor. He's clearly a gorgeous human being and really, really smart. And I love him and lucky you. So I thought... Oh. That's very nice. Do, does she do theatre? She did do, but she stopped now. She's um, going to be a doctor instead. She's going to be a key worker. It, it's so strange uh, when people ask me questions. There's a question, you know, where were you when you found out you were nominated? And one of the most extraordinary things about this whole period, which is a kind of once in a lifetime event, really, this, Covid thing. It's it's you know people say it's our war. You know I wouldn't say it's a war, but I know what they mean. It's a kind of watershed moment. Mm. And what's really strange is that considering it's only, I mean, we found out that we were you know nominated for these uh, awards in maybe February. That feels so long ago. But not only that, I can't really remember who I was because whoever it was, neither our show might close because of COVID, but I didn't have any idea whether that would be permanent, how long it would be, yeah. who I would, you know. Yeah. So in a strange way, you know, when I think back about that time, it feels so, I, I, I can't really remember who I, who I was because my attitude to the future now is so different. It's so, uh, it's so, um, circumstantial about yeah. uh, everything depends on you know the maybes and the mites and the you know and, and the huge unknowns you know yeah yeah same I mean we I think I found out about the nominations for the show um when we were taking it on tour to Australia so we'd had one run at the Almeida and then we had a break and then we reconvened and half the company were new and we re-rehearsed quite intensively briefly and then we went to Australia to the wonderful Adelaide International Theatre Festival and it was like so we flew across the world. We were on airplanes and airports. We arrived, we were in hotels, we were in bars. We were mingling with loads of brilliant other theater and music dance companies from all over the world. It was kind of, you know, it was so oxygenated. It was such a high, incredible work I saw other people doing and this amazing mixing of shows from all over the world. And then, and then COVID began to creep in and then this, these nominations arrived and we were really, really chuffed. And we were looking at a world where we were gonna fly back um, you know, tour for a couple of weeks and open in the West End. And and I agree, it's a bit like people must feel when they've had a car crash, like they took so much for granted. They took everything, even though life was, you know, up and down and difficult sometimes, they were on a track that was not going to really get seriously interrupted. And then suddenly, bam, they hit another car or the tree or whatever it was and everything changed. And I think, I agree, I look back and think I, I was a different person. In fact, I even have trouble thinking, was I really nominated for something <laughs> yeah i mean we we had this strange thing that um sonia friedman produced our show and yet she had this passion to film our show so we went back to our set which we hadn't been in for uh, five and a half months and it was there like a ghost set like all those posters around the west end that you can still see and we walked and we filmed our show over five days uh, and and we had this extraordinary weird thing of sort of reacquainting ourselves with something that, uh, that that was familiar and unfamiliar. I mean, you'll know the syndrome actors have that as soon as you stop performing a play, the day after the lines have gone. It's like almost immediately you delete, you press delete as the curtain comes down on the last show 
you press delete and the lines have gone and you move into the future. Well, I mean, but this one was strange because you hadn't pressed delete, you'd sort of, but my lines had started melting. They, they, it would have been so long. So I sort of, I half knew them and I walked around the set and I was sort of retrieving these lines and movement and things and, and, and associations I'd had and trying to rekindle stuff in rehearsal. But it was very odd trying to reanimate this show. But did it feel like you were creating a new event in filming the, the theatre piece or did it feel that like you were just all trying to retrieve what you had had, where you'd got to when that last curtain came down? Well, I think all we had to go on, really, we didn't have time to re-rehearse the play. So we had, as a reference, what we'd done before yeah. and our director and each other. But, yeah. it, but we, had, we were missing one key element, which is we were playing it in an empty auditorium. The question, what's your most memorable moment in the show, was an easy one for me because there was an event that happened when the show was at the Armida. So in The Doctor, Ruth Wolf character is destroyed over a period of time by the power of social media and, and I suppose for want of a much better word, identity politics. And she's, her, she, her career is destroyed. And she gets to a point about three quarters of the way through where she sort of goes into meltdown. And at that moment, there's no language for a while. They've got this wonderful drummer, Hannah, drumming away on, 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 on her platform. And I just used to kind of drop everything and race around the stage about seven or eight circuits, full tilt, full speed, like the character has no idea. She's a very restrained woman. She uses language very carefully, but language has left her. All she can do is run and run and run. She has no idea what from or what to, she's just running. And there was one night towards the end of the Almeida when I was doing that and suddenly I was aware of a woman who come running, running down one of the aisles and she came right to the foot of the stage at the Almeida and she was shouting, shouting and her arms were up in the air like this and she was waving her arms and she was shouting. She was really well dressed, she looked quite smart and I was doing my circuit and three quarters of me were still immersed in Ruth Wolf, you know, in, in her moment of crisis and a quarter of me was thinking, well, what the hell's, what's going on? And I had a really strong impulse was that that woman wants to run with me and she should. I should and I was about to stretch out my hand and pull her onto the stage so that we could run together because I thought I know she needs that's what she needs she needs to do this and then I thought hang on a minute how am I going to get her off <laughs> well, no, and then she and then she threw a drink at me it was only plastic glass it wasn't an act of aggression it was just she was totally out of control she threw her, her plastic glass or whatever it was and it was fine I wasn't upset I was actually really ecstatically excited by this event and I want if she's watching um, if she's out there in the television audience, I, I, I want her to know that it was an amazing event and I was very grateful for it because um, she was then, some ushers came up and took her and I imagine they took her out. In fact, she was allowed to go back to her seat where she watched the rest of the show quite peacefully. Afterwards, Rob Ike, our wonderful writer director, went and found her in the foyer because he was fascinated by this. And he said, um, and she came up to him and she said, I, I just want to apologize so much for what I did. I have no idea. Something took me over. Please apologize to Juliet, you know, for disturbing the show. And Rob, quite right, thankfully, said, oh, don't, don't need to apologize. She would have been thrilled. You know, <laughs> She was, and, and I was thrilled, but it was an incredible incident of somebody completely empathizing. The empathy experience was so extreme that she lost all sense of self, all sense of how you should and shouldn't behave, all sense of everything. And she was so sort of unable to separate from the character, my character, that she just wanted to come and, and find that same sort of moment of crazy release. I think the third question I'm supposed to ask you is, if you wanted to be, you know, if you could choose to be nominated for something else in your life. Ah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it, I'll explain. After you've told me what you, I'll explain why that reminded me of what I, had a thought about, but um, I really would love to know what your thoughts are about. Do you know, I find that question really impossible. I, I, I you know, nominated for something non theatre related. It's not because I can't think of a world that isn't theatre related. It's more, no, it's I mean. more, it's more that I think what's odd, you know, it's odd that in our life, suddenly this world of prizes comes into it because it seems so you wouldn't do it if it was about that I don't think you'd survive if it, if it was about that so mm -hmm. and I don't think in other life in other in other professions or in other lives 
this question of prizes and how you feel about prizes really crops up. It's not, it's not relevant. And in a, in a, in a strange way, it, it's one of the strangest areas of our work because we all know, you know, I'm not being modest or anything or humble or anything. I, 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 we're not, um, my work entirely depends on other people. It absolutely depends on other people. And I'm sure that's true of a lot of um, jobs in the world where you depend on other people to make sense of your job. Well, I mean, mm. it's critical in acting. You just can't. Mm. So in, in a strange way, it feels almost a paradox that people single you out because you go, well, I couldn't do any of it without that person yeah. giving me that yeah. at the right moment and, and me being and responding in the right way. In the, yeah. So that's why it's, it, that's why the introduction of prizes it's it's a bit it's a bit confusing and it's a bit um, it's hard to untangle what it all means because you're very complimented to be singled out you're not naive about it it's a great honour and you, you see the actors who've been nominated for things in the past and you, you know it's it, it, there's an element of you can't help feeling honoured and flattered by it but at the same time you know that there's something slightly strange about it because it's not our job to be singled out. Our job yeah. is to belong to a world, you know. Yeah. Thinking about this really hard, I thought two things matter to me more than anything in my job. One is to be as good an actress as I can possibly be. Yeah. And the other one, which I would say honestly, truly is as important to me, really, and becomes more important as life goes on, is I want to be a good company member. I want to be really good person to have in a company. I want to make sure that I have behaved decently. I have thought about other people's needs. We, I have done everything I possibly can in, with, with limitations, but everything I could possibly do to ensure that the company um, is happy, is working to its best possibilities with each other, that we're always working collaboratively, that we remember everything you've said, that we, we are only as strong as we are strong together and that every single member of the company is equally important and the stage management and the crew and the dressers and the stage door and every, every, every the whole team makes an evening happen in the theatre and the ushers oh, yeah. and, and the cleaners and and the people who operate the bar and um but but going back to I, I it's really important to me I think to be a good person to have in the company to um, support the younger actors if they're feeling less confident, they haven't had the same kind of experience, to, um, to make sure we have fun, to try and go out there every night together, really connect together and not go out there as separate individuals and make our relationship only with the audience, but to go out there collectively and make our relationship collectively with an audience. And, um, and to be somebody who people are reasonably glad to see when I walk in the stage door at half past five yeah. or 6 p.m. That's really, really matters to me. Really so I'm very happy to important. be nominated to be, um, you know, good, good sport, good fun company member. You've really worried me with that answer. Why? Why, Ted? Because I know I'd never, ever be nominated for that. <laughs> <laughs>